Hello, friends. Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Boss, along with our good friend, one of many Minnesotans who is not affected by the elevation in Denver, Colorado, our good friend, Noah Storzinger. How you doing? It's a great day. I'm feeling good. And here, here's the thing, buddy. Uh, you know, the Twins won 17 of 20. Uh, then they lost six in a row. They are now 0-5 against the division-leading Cleveland Indians. Uh, and I'll tell you what, man. I, I believe they're five and a half games out of out of first place spot. And we might not get to the Twins until a month from now. And that's okay because we've got other things. Wait, oh, right there. Uh, we got other things to talk about. So uh, we, we may not get to baseball for a while, but plus I can't watch them anyways. So... Well, I know I, I, I've not watched the game since, unfortunately. But you know what? I could not give a shit about the Twins right now. Oh, I still I'm give feeling. a shit. I could, I, I, I'll give, give a shit about them. But I just, there's just a lot of other areas that our energy is being, being used right now. Right, and that, and that's what I'm saying is, is, you know, I look at my phone up oh, another loss. But hey, game seven starts today, so let's let let's go. And and, yeah. and after that, like, oh my gosh, like I just I. They're not even in the forefront of, of any of my right. thoughts right now. So right, right. Do you even know who they're playing today? We got uh the Nationals. That's correct. That's correct. All right. So during the course of the show, okay. So Daddy said a lot of things over the course of the last two weeks, and so um, I'm gonna Johnny's gonna have to have to make a lot of apologies during this this particular podcast to a lot of different folks. Um, and I feel probably the best way. So if, if nobody knows what we're talking about, we're talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves and how uh, 20 years ago yesterday, they advanced to their very first Western Conference Finals um, against the Los Angeles Lakers on Kevin Garnett's birthday. And now you, you, you jump ahead 20 years later and they have achieved the Western Conference Finals once again uh, and achieved that on the night of Kevin Garnett's birthday once again, um, this time they will have the Dallas Mavericks. And I think before we get to the Mavericks, I think maybe we should take this series game by game. Um, and, and that might be the easiest way for to me for to make my apologies and the easiest way to actually cover um, what we're feeling. Because I did talk to a good friend right before game six, and he said, and I, I went to your podcast to see that this is after – um, we had dropped three in a row uh, to the Denver Nuggets and, and things were looking bleak. And he said, you know, your last podcast was so positive and you guys were jumping on, you know, bouncing off the walls. And so leading up to game six, I wanted to see how you would cover that. Well, we didn't have a podcast last week. So um, that's why I think that we've got to make up for lost time because there's a lot of things to talk about um, for those seven games. Correct? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, the, the series – the series was was broken up into pieces. I feel like almost perfectly. It, this was such a weird series when you had, you know, you go up 2-0 and and everyone's calling for, yeah, you know, they they might sweep the series, right? Um, and then you go to your home court, you get your ass kicked, um, twice. and then twice, and then you go back to Denver, you lose again. Stuff is looking bleak, and you beat them at your home court by forty five freaking points. And it almost seems like the momentum has shifted and then you win game seven. It's just a weird swing of things that this series went. And I will say I, I had such a, a variety of emotions through this this week and a half or, or how long this series was um, because it was such a such a, a roller coaster of, of different games. And and, and it, it was crazy. Com completely. And, and, you know, I, I said my friends, I said, I think uh, on our last podcast, I said, this is going to be a knockdown drag out brawl all the way across. You know, and everybody was like, this should be the Western Conference final. That would be perfect. Or whatever. doesn't matter. We had to play the Nuggets, whether it was in the semis or it would have been in the finals anyways. Um, but it was a different kind of knockdown drag out brawl. You know what I mean? It wasn't haymaker after haymaker. It was one punch and you're down in the first round and we'll, you know, we'll wait for the next fight. And it was such a bizarre series because I believe going into game seven, the average margin of victory uh, for, for the, the, for the winning team through six games was 21 points. 
Yeah. Okay. That that I don't I don't know. I maybe that's happened one other time. I thought maybe it was the second largest um differential that that actually made it to a game seven, but it was the most bizarre thing. And if you think about our last podcast, we were up 2-0 and like you said, I, everybody said, and I, myself included, I was already chalking it up and, and said that we, I think we're going to see, there's no team that can beat us if we play defense like this, you know? And I think that's where we left, left off with our, you know, with our friends here on, on the podcast was after game two, because, you know, we were talking about Walker about, you know, uh, how cocky he was in game two and we loved it. And, there's no way that you could stop this defense that Denver just did not. Mentally, they were going a little scooters. And, it, I mean, they look like a B team, but we, we, we said, you know, it, it's not that if you get hit, if it's if you get off the mat. And Denver came, got not only got off the mat, but they came back swinging and almost knocked us out. Um, it, but, it, but it did. So, so let's get into game three because anything you want to say about game three off the bat, because the one – there was one, I guess, I guess one thing, and he took credit for it, but there was one thing that was concerning in game three um, at home. Um, that game was, was interesting because you went in with so much, so much um, hope, I guess, I guess in the, in the sense of like, man, we, we, we got this, like, this is, we're on our home floor. We're up to nothing. We just embarrassed you in game two. Um and and I I think it was was tough because you almost felt like it was gonna happen um, that they were gonna get their ass spanked just after the the whole world after game two had 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 been on Team Timberwolves and you're like we we never get this we never right. get this national media attention we never have everyone on our side and so you almost felt like a blunder was gonna come in game three um, so I, I that one was frustrating for sure um and i think it was i think it was game three where ant had said stop yep. calling me mj stop calling me MJ. Oh, yeah 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 but it, it was another comment that he made that that was disappointing to me when he said i just didn't have the energy coming out and i got to be better than i'm like is game three you're at home how can you come out with with no energy i didn't understand that at all and i mean i'm, I'm glad he took credit for it and said yeah that was on me but it seemed like the rest of the team didn't come out either. And I'm sorry, man. And, and, and I want to get to that when we talk about game six, because there were some other, other things that, um, you know, people were, were, were saying about the Denver Nuggets kind of along the same lines. And I'm like, no, 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 not, not in the playoffs. You can't, you can't sleepwalk or you can't go 50% in a playoff game. Even if, or especially if you're up 2-0, you come home, you know, and I think I made that comment to you. I'm like, I don't like the crowd in game. The crowd was there in game three. I think you said it was ESPN uh, audio that 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 kind of drowns, drowns them out a little bit. But, um, no, the crowd was there both in, in all the games that that uh, the Wolves the Wolves played at the Target Center. Um, you know, I, I'll be honest, and I said this many times at work, uh, today and in the last, I haven't, I, I was wondering if I even have a right to have a podcast because I only got one game right on this whole fucking series, man. And that was, that was game five. That was the only one where I knew what was going to happen because the way it went game one, I was like, ah, eh, nuggets at home. You know, we could maybe steal one. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Denver's going to win game one. Okay. We win game one. I said in game two, I'm like, there's no way Denver's going to let us take two in Denver, right? Totally wrong. Then game three, I'm like, oh, we got this, dude. We Wolves are, yeah, wrong. And I'm like, well, game four, there's no way that the Wolves are going to let Denver take two in a row at home, right? With the crowd being the way it was, and wrong again, 0 for 4. Game five was the only one that I was right. I was like, nope, it's over. We, we don't know. We have no answers. We're done. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What was to say? You counted us out game six and seven then? It, it, well, let's, let's go down the road on that one. Yes, because that's where daddy's got to make some apologies. Okay. Um, so getting back to game, game three and there, you know, there wasn't a lot of energy. In it. Game four was embarrassing as well. 
And at that point, and I, and I didn't understand, you know, I like to think that I'm a student of the game and that I've been watching this game for so long that, that I understand the ebbs and the flows of, of how basketball works. But I had no answer after game four, except for the fact that I was like, oh yeah, the, they are the defending champion. And now they completely figured out what, what, I don't know if they took game one and two off, but we have no answer for them. This is a done deal. And I, I do, I do believe that I, I, I did believe it. It was weird. I, I, I think because the, the nuggets looked like a completely different team in game three and four, just offensive schemes, defensive schemes. Um, and, and I was going to say though, I think the, the one thing that hurt the wolves was coming from game two, where you had just, defensively annihilated this team's hopes, dreams, whatever it may be. And you come into game three and I will say game two, they let them play. They let them yep. play. Yep. It's just when you have tough defense, that's how it works. You gotta, you know, they're going to be physical. Um, you came into game three. I think, I mean, just immediately the first quarter, you could tell they're not playing that shit. They were not, I mean, they were calling right. a lot of stuff and I think that got in the head of, okay, well now what do we do? If I can't, if I can't guard you 94 feet up the floor and you're going to call foul immediately for a little bump or something, because they were calling that. And <laughs> that's what was unfortunate was I think it got in, it got in the head of them a little bit mentally, but Denver came out firing. Um, and I think the, the, the calls came a little back. So you know, game five, six and seven, they let them play a little bit more, which, which helped us out. Um, so that, I guess that, that was one of my questions because Going after after game four, I was like, I think they I think they got Edwards. Like he looked completely confused going into game five. Um wasn't, I mean, when they double teamed him now, Conley was a big deal. It, missing him in game five was a was a huge deal. Um and nobody else would like, I mean, Edwards is going to give you, and we'll get to Edwards in a second, about good Edwards and bad Edwards. Bad Edwards is still good Edwards, okay? Um, but you looked at it and you were like, well, no. Uh, Edwards needs some help here. He's 22 fucking years old. And he, and here's the thing. Been wrong so many times. How wrong was I on Anthony Edwards? All I did was talk about his immaturity all season, and he's the most mature guy on the bench after game three. You see him as the game's coming down, and he and he's looking at all the guys on the bench. And he goes, "It's a series, man. It's a series. It's one game." All right, I he to me, you know, when I heard his interview when he was talking about Towns, and he's like, "Quit fucking fouling, dude. What are you doing?" Like he is to me the leader, like a text that you gave me. He's only twenty two, and they they kept their negative emotions out of the game. Uh, or out of the series, their emotions did not get the best of them. Denver's definitely did. Um, but how how cool is that, that you have a 22-year-old who is now talking like he's been there for 20 years, and he's telling Carl Anthony Towns, who's a nine-year veteran, who's always been, you know, the, 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 the anchor around our neck, uh, and he's telling him how to, how to act. It, 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 yeah. I mean, I think it's a, a mix of having a, a a couple years ago getting the dog in him with Patrick Beverly, and you had his early years. You had Ricky Rubio teaching him how to how to maybe play the game the right way, and then you got Elder Mike Conley coming in and really teaching him. And I, but so cool. I, I just think like because to your point, like <laughs> watching those mic'd up moments with with Ant, like you are like this. I wasn't acting like, I mean, I'm only 24. I wasn't acting like that two years ago. That that would not have been me wow. at all. No. I mean, not that I'd be playing NBA basketball, but like it, it, it's crazy to see what he's doing on, on the bench, on the court, um, because he's become the alpha of that pack for sure, for sure um, to the point where it, it it's rubbing on Cat a little bit too because you see the, I think Cat catches looks different to me a little bit, but but I think that's a lot of Mike Conley and, and watching Timberwolves basketball for so long, it's always the emotions get the best, especially with cat. Never. I've not seen it this playoffs, the Phoenix series, 
the Denver series. I mean, you throw your arms up in the air a couple times, but I mean, I have not seen him go berserk like I've seen right. him go before, which is right. just so encouraging. Right. I, I agree totally. I, I agree. And, and um, you know, I mean, there, there are so many things like I, I didn't write a, I don't usually write a script. Sometimes I write notes about like, don't forget to bring this up. Um, but I'm going completely, um, I, I'm free balling right now. I, I don't have anything. And I, I do want to make sure that we cover everything. And I, I think a lot of it will come when, when we get, get to game seven. Um, but like, I want to talk again um, about, you know, what leading up to game five, um, the Wolves did not look like this was going to go our way, man. And, you know, after we did our last podcast, that was two weeks ago, we talked about all the things like Walker has not shown up since game two. I'm sorry. He hasn't No, and I know that's your boy, um, but he, he hasn't. Alexander Walker has been um, a non-entity in the last, in the last five games. Um, you had, you, you know, you had, other other deals, Nas Reed not as maybe aggressive or just not doing doing the things that we're used to him. And so um, I read after Game Five, I read I think it was Michael Rand wrote about how in the Star Tribune about how this is not a Minnesota curse. And I'm like, fuck you, yes it is. This is what I'm used to. This is how it always goes with all of the Minnesota teams and here comes the apologies. Okay. Because I keep forgetting that I watched every game this team played this year. And there really isn't a lot of like, yeah, that's it. The white flags up. I'm done. There, it isn't. It's, it's not like any other Minnesota team. And remember I watched two world series winners, but I never had, I guess the kind of confidence going in, but it was shattered. For three games, okay? And so here's my first apology that I'm going to go with. So after game five, I get a good call. Um, I get a call from my good buddy, Marty. Um, don't mind using his name because I said I would. And I get this text the next morning after game five. And he's like, you know, I, I have a ticket for you for game six. And I texted him back right away. I'm sorry, I can't make it. And I know that it made him a little, a little upset. Now this is a guy that I went to the very first Minnesota Timberwolves home game against the Bulls at the Metrodome. I've been to Los Angeles for the last Western conference finals. The Wolves were in. Um, and he's basically like, what else do you have going on on a Thursday night? You can, when have you ever turned down a ticket? You know, and I was thinking, I was like, here's the thing. This is a done series. I didn't say this. I didn't say any of this, but I'm like, if I want to be disappointed for, you know, he said tickets were reasonable. He never put a price tag on, but I got to imagine they were a hundred, 120 bucks, whatever. Well, why don't I just go to a strip club and hand $120 at the door, not even get my water down drink or my two water down drinks and price of admission and not, and then just go home disappointed. And then I got to watch skin a match because I, I've got nothing to take away from that. And so he was, he was making a good argument and I, all I did, I, I didn't give him a reason. I just said, I can't make it. I can't make it. Now, after game six, I texted him as soon as I woke up and I said, you are a better man than I am. Uh, and, and in fact, I'm kind of a jerk and, and I'm sorry. And then I got to think that I pissed him off a little more because I was like, Hey, do you want to fly to Denver for game seven? Let's go to game seven. And right. Um, he said the series was, wasn't over. You said the series wasn't over going into game six. And, and so I, I've got to apologize to, to Marty, maybe to you. I, maybe I wasn't as forceful about it, but I thought it was done for sure. I think a lot of people did, especially after game. Well, after game five, it looked bleak. I think you had a little optimism just that you were playing on your home floor for game six. Because um, when I watched it, I was, you know, after game five, I was so, so pissed off. Yep. Um, and then game six rolls around. I think they jumped out game six to like a nine, two, nine, two advantage or some, and then they go on that crazy run. And then I think all the good feelings just bubbled up inside me. And I said, we're winning game seven. We are well, winning this fucking series. I, I told you I wasn't right on any of them. Okay. 
as soon as okay, this, this is how bad it was because I told everybody at my job, there's no way. No, we're, we're done tonight. I'm going to say goodbye to my team in my own way. Did not watch it with anybody. And uh, this is what I told people at work. I said, as soon as the Nuggets go up by two points, g- goodbye, buddy. I, I It was a great season. It was a great try. Good. They go up 9-2 and tell me that, hey, did anybody see? After we were down 9-2, we went on a 112 to some like 53 run. Okay. Like I, now after that, and by the way, Carl Anthony Towns, even though he had only, I think 10 points, maybe in game six, he was a big reason why, why that was. Okay. So going into game seven, everybody's excited because I was like, that's all fine and good. Okay. Well, we got this win, but I know Minnesota and I'm like, you don't get two wins for beating a team by fucking 50 points. You don't. I was like, you know, it was like the twins going up 12 to one, you know, and it's the ninth inning and you're like, can we save some of those runs, you know, against the Yankees? And, and I was like, no, I mean, you're going to go back to Denver. They're still the defending champions. And something tells me that it's, it's going to be a little, a little different going to game seven. So now I'm going to make my second apology. And specifically um, to one of my students, because all series, I'm talking to this kid, Adam, and and game game four, game five, game six, game seven. He's like, we got this, Mr. Boss. We got it. No, we we're winning. We're going to the we're going to the Western Conference Finals, then we're going to the NBA Finals. I'm like, hate to break it to you, buddy, but no, we're not. And and then I had egg on my face the next morning or all, all the time. So Adam, I apologize to you. You were keeping it real, but I, I wasn't, you know. Um, going to game seven, I was like, there, there, there's no way because I just know how Minnesota teams are. And this is what felt so unfair and all. In, in this series, we held the defending champion to... 80 points or less in two of our, our our three wins up until that point, right? And it just didn't seem fair that we were still going to lose the series, right? Yep. Uh, I just didn't think that they had the maracas to get it done. I just figured it would be. And, and, and another thing that I ticked me off was I heard all this from the national media. people. Well, Denver knew that they were getting beat once they were down 20 they knew they had a game seven. So they just kind of threw in the towel on game. I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to buy that at all. It's still the playoffs and you see what happened in game seven. So if there's any fiber of truth to that, Denver just said, well, it's game six. We can't do anything. We'll go back and win in game seven. Fuck off because that's not true. Your thoughts on game six going into game seven. Game six was such a, a uh, euphoric high, I think, of, of, of emotions, of of is just – because I think playing that game, you just were like, this – we are the better team. Like, this – we we are we are better than the Denver Nuggets. Like, we showed you – we kicked your ass at your place. We're kicking your ass at our place. I understand you beat us here on our floor, but the way we're going about this, like, we, we just are a better team. And that's why going into game seven was such a – I mean, I'm talking to everyone. I'm like, game seven, game seven. It's gonna happen. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. And I've, I, I've just, I've never, I had never felt that before. It with, with the Twins, with the, I, I mean, I guess the Vikings a little bit in 20 was at 2017 when they got their ass kicked in Philly or whatever yeah. before potentially going to Super Bowl. But um, it, it's just a different feeling for me. But, but like I said, like I think just going through Game Six, you just, you just saw that this team was better on an offensive level on a defensive level. Even the offensive level wasn't throughout the whole series was not great, but your defense just, just carries you and it affected your offense. I mean, you saw when in game, I think game, well, I guess we'll talk about game seven, but even some other games, like when they weren't hitting shots, once they started getting some stops, then they started hitting shots. It, it just affected their, their game uh, enough. So um, it, it was a good time, man. I agree. I agree. And, and 
you know, like I say, I, I only called one game correctly out of the seven, but I, I mean, I got to give props. I mean, my, my buddy Chris called and he said, he's got a feeling about game seven, Ozzy, same deal. Um, now I don't answer my phone before or after the games, um, during the play. I mean, throughout this series, I have been getting weird ass text, man, from people I haven't talked to in a few years. Um, you know, I, I looked at my phone after we beat the Suns, and I looked at it and like, yeah, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that's all fine and good. But who is this? I don't know anyone 507 except for one person. Um, I'm telling you last night, I even got a text from your mom. I don't think your mom has ever texted me about a Timberwolves game ever. Okay. So I, I, I had just have to mention this cause you brought it up. I was going to bring it up, but I got to shout her out uh, because she was texting me in game six and in game seven. And when I tell you, my mom has never talked basketball <laughs> once in her life. Watch me play basketball was never, Hey, great rebound way yeah. to score. You know, this many, whatever. She never she's played the game. No, no, no. But she's talking to me about bench points for yeah. the Nuggets. She's like, "What you know that the energy is great." Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "I, this is maybe maybe my dad was talking to her about about certain things, but I, like when she brought up bench points, that's where I had to like take a step. I'm like, whoa, yep. you, you talk yep. about bench point. You're winning, listening winning, to the game. Winning, yeah, winning cures a lot of things, doesn't it? Or it starts yeah. a lot of things. What so." Yeah. Okay. All right, Minky. Good job. Uh, I, I'm telling you, everybody had a feeling about Game Seven, um, except for for yours truly. Um, and and I I want to tell you why, but uh, before because I I want to make sure that I get to um, all my apologies because I think I've I've got half of them done. Okay. So here's how my Game Seven day started. Okay. Um, I'm going to come here because you're going to get credit for this. So Saturday night, I go to a buddy's uh, uh, birthday party. I get home at about eh, roughly about 3 a.m. Uh, and my my buddy who came back, he, he was getting a cab. And as we were, you know, in and out of the door, this guy runs out of the house and, and just takes off. And he's gone. And obviously, if I got home at 3 a.m., I looked at my buddy Bear and I go, this is how you get DWIs, all right? I did everything responsible to get home by taking a, an Uber, Lyft, or whatever they call it in Minneapolis nowadays. And I, I'm like, I got to get my dog because he will run. Like, usually, this dog did not. I, I walked around looking for this dog for an hour thinking, well, after an hour, then all the booze wears out, out of your system. So then you can get in the car, right? Um, I was waiting. Okay. So I get in a probably four fifteen in the morning. I get in my car to look for my dog and it was six, seven, eight, nine AM still at it. Now I was waiting for, where's this fucking incredible journey where the dog, you know, has a homing, you know, device in him, in his system that he can just get back to the, to your house because he misses sleeping in your bed or whatever, or like he's hungry or whatever. I drove around Noah until 9.45. I knew my dog was, was gone. I was like, that's it. I'll never see this dog again. I guarantee it, right? The entire time I'm praying to Jesus going, please just give, give me my dog back. Give me my dog back. I finally find him at 9.45. Now, in the meantime, I've got to apologize to Andy Benedict because his daughters are being confirmed and I promised them I would be at their confirmation. Well, it's 10 o'clock and I don't know where my dog is, right? Finally get the dog. I, I find him 30 blocks away. He had been gone for six hours. He's dirty as a Frenchman when I get him. And so then I have to throw him in the bathtub. I finally am able to get, take a nap at like noon. So I haven't slept all night, right? My stomach was so stressed out and because I knew I was never going to see my dog again. Right. I try to sleep, but I can't because there's a game seven coming up. I had the bubble guts so bad. I couldn't. And about six, I waited as long as I could. And about six o'clock. Now I got to apologize to P I promised him. I'm like, no, I know I'm old. I never come for night games. I'm coming for game seven. I just got to, my stomach was so upset 
because of my fucking dog and because it was game seven that I knew we were going to lose, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> in the meantime, up until tip-off time, I go back to my good friend Jesus and I'm like, please, Jesus, I'm one for one. How about two for two? Please give us this win. Now, if you would talk to my dad, he would say we never bother Jesus about something as inconsequential as a sporting event. All right. Where my mom would go, you know what, John, whatever you need to be happy. Yes, you can. He wants us to. Okay. That's why I always went to mom over dad about, Hey, can I do this? And okay. Um, so, I mean, I've been on my knees all day praying. All right. In the up to game seven. All right. But I was still so certain that we were going to lose this game. Now, that being said, Game seven comes into play. And what happens in the first half? Uh, missing open jump shots. Anthony Edwards does not does not look like Anthony Edwards. Right, okay? Um, ridiculous turnovers. Uh, not attacking the rim. And, like, suddenly you think you're going to find someone when you had an easy layup. I just – it didn't – it did not look good. It – Rudy Gobert had the touch of a rapist, okay, shooting the ball. It just didn't look. And so out of all those games, three, four, and five, I said, if they get down 15 points, it's done. It's a done deal because you can't chip away at a team like Denver to play catch up like that. It, it won't happen. It will not happen. And nothing was going right for us in the first half. You're down by 15 going at a half. I was like, ball game. All the family reruns were being played at the time. I was I was switching. I was like, it, it's got to be done. I'll come back and see how bad it is. But I was so sure. Now, what were your thoughts at halftime? <laughs> halftime was when I cracked open a couple more beers because yeah. it was, you know, I had some good friends over and I'm, you know, they're all Kansas City guys, so they're not fully Timberwolf fans, but they're cheering, right? Um and just the the maybe they hadn't hadn't seen that before of just like the defeat on my face when I say like I I typically I'm not like a I'm gonna go binge drink because I'm so sad whatever yeah. stuff like that but just seeing me go into the fridge and pull out three beers instead of just one beer and cracking open three yeah. um, that was something I've never done in my entire oh, you did life. A Rebecca, how you just opened all of them at the same time? Okay, all right. All I right. said, you know what? It's the it's. I got it. Like it, it's, yep. it's just, that's kind of night. And, um, it, it, it was, I, I still had some, I'm a pretty optimistic guy, so I'm not going to lie. I had some optimism left in me because I said, you know what? It's the playoffs. It's, it's different. They're not gonna, I don't think they're going to give up. Like if it's a regular season game, I think they would have given up potentially, but it's the playoffs. I was, I was feeling okay. Uh, and then, you know, the liquors, the, the beer started flowing a little bit and the optimism started to rise, especially when we got in that third quarter. Yeah. But I mean, at that point, third quarter, they took it up to 20 points. Yeah, it was a it, right away, just five point swing, took it up to 20 points. And it it that's when I was like, OK, well, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm going to keep watching, but it's. Well, Thanks. and I, I'll, I'll say this, man, because there are still people who are really hard. And I, I was in the past, but I think this year I've been pretty pro Carl Anthony Towns. And I would say, fuck you to all the people that hate Carl Anthony Towns and wanted him traded before the season started. If it wasn't for Carl Anthony Towns in game seven, we would not be talking right now with this logo behind me. All right. He kept us in at least within 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the first half, he was the only one that had anything going. And he made big shots in the first half. Like I say, it would have been 30 or 40 points had he not just made a few shots because no one else was doing it. No, I, 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 it's, it's so great to see the narrative around Carl Anthony Towns switch this postseason because I think I mentioned it. Either the the second to last podcast or last podcast, just of how different he's been in this postseason compared to the other ones. Yes, um, and it's just fun because you know you've been with the franchise for nine years, like you just want to see this guy succeed. Um, 
because he's a good guy. You just he's he's good at basketball, and you just you just want to see him be successful and 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 bring this team you know to the to these games and and put them on your shoulders. And that's exactly what he did. And people are still trying to clown him. I mean, it was Game Seven. It was like an hour before tip or two hours, whatever. And he's sitting in the stands, just kind of just looking at the court and everyone's like, Oh, you know, what is he doing? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, he's locking in, like, let him do his shit. Like stop clowning him because guess what? He's fucking good at basketball. Right. And, and you know what? He just, he, he won the Timberwolves game seven. We're going to West Conference final. Absolutely. So. It, with, without Carl Anthony Town and that, that caught me. You know, everyone says, you know, there's no way we can afford him um, next year. Uh, but you know, it, I guess with what happens, you know, for the rest of this Timberwolves season, I don't want to see Towns go. I, I don't because I think this core is just hitting. I, I don't even I don't even know if they are at their peak yet. You know what I mean? I, and, and so I, I I don't I don't think I I want to you know we were to win a championship. I don't think it start. Hey, let's trade Tom Bernanski for Tommy Her. We just won a World Series. You know what I mean? Like, um, why why would you? Because without Towns, I don't think that you're where you're at season wise, playoffs wise. No, I think hey, regardless of what happens, everything's in place right now where they can run it back. So mm-hmm. I, I see zero zero shot right now of of, of that happening uh, of. Towns going, what Rudy going, whatever. Um, and I want to bring it back to Brian Windhorst at ESPN preseason, I think it was, had said, or maybe a week in his season, I can't remember, had said um, it's unclear or it, it's probably um, uncertain that the Timberwolves could get any picks right now if they traded Carl Anthony Towns. And really. Yeah, he said, I don't think they could even get a first round pick for Carl Anthony Towns. Are you kidding me? Wow. I I don't know if I agree with that. Uh huh. I I did not see that quote. Uh well, fine. You know, you know, I mean, I I I think if you saw Towns, like he was having a moment at the end of game seven. Um, and and like I say, and like I I referenced my my buddy Chris, he said that he thought. Towns. Now he doesn't know basketball. He always admits that. I don't know basketball like I know baseball, but he said he thought Towns would be a a, a key part of game seven. And I, I knew that. I said that when he got injured, that you know, that this is not going to be the same kind of team if he if he is out. Now, I do have a question. Um, when it comes to national media or players or anything like that, why is it that that Rudy Gobert is so hated in this league, in this country, whatever it is? Like, is it is it because of you know the touching the microphones during COVID? Is it because he's French, uh, or is it because he's won four Defensive Player of the Years, uh, uh, you know, and he's a foreigner? Uh, you know, I mean, to me, because everybody. Everybody just wants to hogpile on him all the time. And, you know, I mean, to me, it's like, well, you'd have a former president who could cure hunger. He could have the the answer to hunger tomorrow, and he'd still be the most evil person on the planet. All right? And I I think of that as Gobert, and I don't think Gobert played that. I thought game five, Gobert did everything he could. He played good defense, and Jokic was just that good. All right? So – I'm just trying to figure out why Gobert is always crucified. And even Barkley wanted to do that at halftime again last night. And I, I don't understand like it, there, what it is. Like, does he have naked pictures of, of, of somebody's wife or what, like what, what is the deal with that? I, I want to say it's the, the. It can't be. With, with, yeah, with, with how that. No, I, it's got to be with how the game is now, in my opinion. I, I, I think like the way offense is valued over defense now in the NBA, Rudy, I mean, it, this is just my, my guess. It's just like Rudy doesn't have much of an offensive game and people don't value defense, of much, defense as much. And I think that's changing with this team, obviously. I think it's changing the narrative a little bit. 
Um, but I don't think people think Rudy was very good, or I think they thought he was overrated. I think the COVID thing played into it, and maybe they thought he was a little bit of a dick to Donovan Mitchell because Donovan Mitchell's this godsend uh, player. Um, but I, this franchise embraced him, and it is, and he has come out and said that like I have a home, like this is yeah. this is my and. This is a guy who spent years in Utah and won multiple defensive player of the years. Um, and, and, and I mean, last year was a little interesting, but I mean, this, this team, this, this fan base, this franchise has just embraced him. And I think it's really cool to see. I think the national media is getting there, but no, I, I mean, even Udonis Haslam said they're going to have to play him only like 12 minutes in the playoffs. Uh, Barkley said they should bench him. Um, ridiculous. Draymond Dray- Green because because, like because if it wasn't if it wasn't for those three guys like they because I think Barkley uh, they gotta go smaller. What are they doing? I'm like no, we just kept throwing centers at Jokic and you know he didn't he played all but one minute and and he was effective but not okay. We'll get we'll get to that and say I I I just I don't understand because when Gobert was with Utah, I mean, and they were a rival. I didn't hate him. I mean, I, I don't like the French, but I didn't hate him because of because of anything that he specific. I thought he was a good ball player, but um man, he gets he gets it from everyone. And well, like uh, Draymond Green, fuck off, dude. Like what Draymond Green should have been saying, like, oh, he got burned, barbecued, sauteed, uh, shrimp gumbo. All right, you know what? That's fine. You can make that observation, but then let everyone know. Draymond, that you got fucking sautéed by by Jokic too, right? And look, why? First of all, why is Draymond allowed to be doing analysis for NBA I when agree. he's been suspended multiple times? I agree. Um, I agree. He was fighting Rudy Gobert this season. Why is he allowed to have analysis on Rudy Gobert? And yes, you said he was getting he was barbecue chicken. I'm sorry. Yes, Jokic had a really good game, and there's not much you can do. I don't care if you're the defensive player of the year. But there are some shots where Jokic is just there was throwing the ball. And what do you want him to do? Right, Stop. and not hitting rim at all. No, <laughs> and so uh, Draymond Green. Everyone was shitting on on Draymond Green after Game Seven. Said, "Come out with that podcast, Draymond Green, because we want to hear your thoughts now on, on what happened." Because Rudy had a great game yesterday, right. and it was he still came out and said, "Well, Minnesota went on the run." when Gobert took a seat on the bench, oh, right. which was absolutely not yeah. true. And oh, guess yeah. what? Oh, Rudy Gobert is a, is, has like the highest um, efficiency rating when, when, when he's on the floor with the Timberwolves. So I, but, the, the numbers oh, speak for himself. But now, but now wait a minute, because that's not a fair analysis of it because when Towns picked up, and to me, the, his fifth foul was the only stupid foul. You know, Towns is known for not making wise fouls. His fifth foul last night was the only one where I was just like, oh, man, that's a dumb foul. And when he went out, you thought, all right, now it might get back. It might get back to reality, except then Nas Reed picked up right where, you know what I mean? So you could say that same argument. Well, the Wolves really didn't clinch the game until Towns sat down and Nas Reed, Nas Reed came in, right? So, I mean, I don't, I don't really think that that's a fair assessment. No, and and it's just Draymond being a bitch and not yeah, knowing you know, like he's just and guess what he's going to be on the TNT NBA crew for the Western Conference Finals the whole series so that's going to be ridiculous amazing ridiculous. all right so game seven goes on and uh, I I tell you I I mean I don't know where the worm turned but all of a sudden I had this creeping feeling but I'm, I'm on the opposite of it so much. Like when a Minnesota team is up and they should just put it to bed and then you feel this overwhelming feeling of dread, disgust, pain. I I think that was a text you gave me pain. Uh, And for once in my life, I was like, Holy cow. We're on the opposite. We're, we're the ones that, like if you were a Denver fan, you would have this creeping feeling that oh shit, we're we're gonna lose this game. Um, and I don't know 
why it was, but I, it got to a point where I was like, nah, we got, we got this. We're, we're going to win this game. I mean, yes, there were devils, you know, in my head saying, no, I mean, even when we were up by 10, I was like, but you gotta, you gotta appreciate what the Wolves did in the second half of game seven. They were down 20 points and they outscored, what was it, like 56, was it 56, 26? They, uh, they outscored them by 30 points yeah, to go up was, by 10. It was 60 to 27. Okay. In the second half. Do you, can I ask you when, when, because there was a certain time in the game, like, I mean, when, when Edwards, he hit the three at the end of the quarter. I was like, you know what? I think we got a shot now. I mean, the whole time I was like, if we can get it down to four. And this was, I think it was like a minute left. We were down by four. And I'm like, if we can just maintain four, we get the ball at the beginning of the fourth quarter. All we have to do is, no, no, we were down one. Was there a time in that game where you just knew that the Wolves were going to win? Because I, I know I do. Okay. I have two, okay. Um, the, the main one for me and the, the, the other one's a little silly, but it just makes sense. The, the main one for me, I think we were tied at 72. Mike Conley had a step back, a little, little shimmy step back three. That was at the buzzer, it, right? That was at the shot clock buzzer. Is that oh yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and I was like, we're in rhythm. We're yep. feeling it. it it's going to happen. The other one, just cause I felt like the basketball gods were on our side. No, because this is the one right here. I know what – go ahead. Look, when Gobert is shooting Dirk Nowitzki <laughs> shots and hitting, I've never I, – now, mind you, at this point, I'm I'm drunk. Like, I'm, I'm like, watching this. I'm – uh, when even my friends who don't know Rudy Gobert as, as much as we do – you know, stand up and it's like, what the hell did I, what? And you just, Oh, yeah. I mean, yep. it was, that's where you're like, ah, I think we got it. That's because that was at the shot club clock buzzer as well. I didn't even see the ball leave his hand. I was like, what, what are you doing? No. And it, now he had two like that where I think it was the layup where he got fouled. I never saw the ball leave his hand. And, but after he made that, it was a fadeaway as well, I believe. I was like, I'm sorry, man. I, I know a lot of people that live in Denver, but I'm sorry, man. It ain't going your way at all. I well, mean, this, this is a done deal. That was the, to me, that was an exclamation mark before we even started writing the next sentence. You know what I, I mean? I, just, I was like, that, that's it. You can't, you can't do anything with that. And it wasn't like, yes, it was kind of, I mean, it was a circus shot for Gobert for sure. But if you look at the zoomed out version where they're on the opposite baseline, like the camera, just the arc he had, and it, it was just a perfect shot. Like it wasn't a laser beam that just somehow made it in. Like yeah. it was just a, just a beauty of a, of a touch. And, and it was, that's when you're like, all right, I think the basketball gods are on our side right. right now. I, I agree. And, and, um, you know, it, at, at that point, and, and then, of course, I mean, every time Denver, I mean, they, they kept it. They kept it close. We always came back with a basket. But, you know, when 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 Towns picked up his fifth foul and Nas came in and, and, and then, you know, Rudy fouled out, and I'm like, in my, in my mind, like I say, I got Lucifer on one shoulder – you know, and I got Beelzebub on the other one. And and they're telling me, here's what's going to happen. Because you're a Minnesota fan and you write the worst case scenario and it will happen. When Gobert fouled out, I'm like, do not go to overtime and Towns is going to fall out right before overtime. And then it's, then it's ball game, right? And it, it, never, it never happened. But when Towns sat and Nas Reed came in and everybody, Nas can't guard Jokic. Oh, really? Had a few blocks in the, in that the dunk was, I mean, I, I ran, almost ran around the block. I almost put it on pause and ran around the block and I smoke a lot. So that's a, that's a, a hard deal for me, but that's how excited I was. And then you get the steal, you're coming down, 
You find Edwards in the corner, and that puts us up by 10. And I was like, ball game. That's it. Well, and and the exclamation point for, for me, um, well, I wouldn't say that, but but it was just really the the nail in the coffin was I think they cut it to five. Yeah. With like 40 yep. seconds yep. left. And we come up the yep. floor and it's like, and guess who bailed us out? They don't need to foul. They don't need to do it. And Reggie Miller, he's good. First of all, Reggie Miller wanted the Nuggets to win. I think Harlan and, and Jamal Crawford were, were on the Wolves side. But but Reggie says, the last thing you want here for if you're the Nuggets is an offensive foul. Get a stop here. I think it was Conley or someone put up a shot. And who comes out of just yeah. blazing out of nowhere yep. for the putback? Carl Anthony Towns seals the deal. It was fantastic. Well, and, and Denver, I think – I think the big problem that Denver had in game seven was they got in foul trouble right away in the second half. And that, to me, that was ball game right there because we were able to score. We finally were able to hit some free throws last night, but we were able to do it without taking any time off the clock. So if you're down 20 and you're already in the bonus, right or not? No, I, I was just going to say, I'm looking at the, the box score you talk about free throws. My coach had always told me defensive free throws wins championships. They only missed four free throws last night. Right, which had been a problem in previous games. Um, but that was that was huge. You want to talk about maturity with Anthony Edwards. What he said, well, <laughs> what he said after the game, I, I loved it because if – you do not like Anthony Edwards, get on board right now. Because what he said was, I'm not a one-dimensional player. I don't just score baskets. That's it. All right. And and Mike Conley, I heard his interview today. And and he he said, I don't, I don't even need to tell you nothing. He said, and Ant came back and was like, no, nah, you don't need to tell me anything. I'm going to go play. I'm going to be aggressive on defense and that's it. And he did. And I, I heard people saying he was getting swipes like MJ in his prime. I know he doesn't like the comparison, but it was. The, the steals, like every time I saw, I think he had two really big steals where he just picked pockets, all right? And and I was, as soon as I was like, oh, they're going to foul. That's going to be a foul. Nope. And, and for Edwards, to, and he didn't stop shooting either. And I loved what he said because I'm Denver fans were giving him a hard time the entire time. And what did he say at the end of the third quarter? You knew I wasn't going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Right. And um, I don't know. That was, that was refreshing, man. It, it really was. It was great because I think, I mean, I was, I, I was, I will say I was, I was frustrated with Ant in the first half because I just, you know, two points and, and his defense didn't show up in the, in, until the second half. Like truthfully, he, that's when he decided, all right, now I'm going to, going to play some defense or whatnot. And that's fine. I would have loved to see it for 48 minutes, but um, yeah, he, he just, you look at the box or it's six of 24. I love that he kept shooting. I want him to shoot. I just, yep. I want him yep. to shoot. Um, but eight boards, seven assists gave you 16 points, but obviously 14 of those were in the second half when you really needed them. But now wait a um, minute. He was hitting the back, the back of the backboard and then he shot an air ball. And, and, and at times I was like, I don't know, man, you're trying too hard, but he didn't. And, and I mean, I, I don't know. There were so many things that were cool in the first half towns being so patient in the post up when he knew he had the mismatch and he wasn't all out of control, you know, arms flailing. He waited, waited and got his basket. And it, man, it, it, it was just so much fun to watch. It, it was. And just with Ant, like you just, the way he impacted the game in the second half, like that's that's a superstar. Like I don't yep. care that he had 16 points and p casuals will look at the box score and say, well, he didn't have a great game, whatever. No, he had a great game. He had a he yep. had a great game. Um, not his best game, but he had a great game um, because he impacted he impacted the game. And and the seven assists is the one that I I love. Is just like he's your guard. He's your he's your star shooting guard. That's that's gonna score bunches but still loves to get his teammates involved. will play defense and, and just, it, there's just so many facets facets around his game um, that I love. 
Uh, I don't know what you had next, but I wanted to talk about well, my MVP. Well, well, the, you're talking about maturity. Anthony Edwards dribbling the ball down the floor. And no, I loved it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. See ya. Bye. Get out of here. <laughs> and, well, and, then, I mean, I, and, and right. And like, would you like it if he was playing with the Nuggets? Probably not. But man, I, because he can, he can back it up. And here's the thing about Anthony Edwards is that when you look at this team and why I said, I want to keep these guys together is do they look like they like each other and that yes. Okay. And like, there seems to be such a camaraderie. Like we talked about Nas Reed could have got, got paid. And he said, I feel comfortable here. Everyone loves me here. All right. Town and, Edwards didn't come out and say, Hey man, I suck, but I picked it up at the end. Who do you give credit to? Jaden McDaniels, Carl Anthony Towns. Like these guys feed off, but, but I would think it would be tough for a 22 year old not to buy into the hype, but he gives his boys credit every game. And well, if you saw the post game interview with Towns and Everett, I'm like, what they're going to take their comedy act on the road. What the fuck is that? But they looked so happy. And the way like Jade McDaniels looks at, or I'm sorry, that Edwards looked at Jade McDaniels while he was given the, the post game interview or whatever. Like you have to think that there is some connection there with these guys. And, and that's why, that's why I'm like, man, the sky's the limit right now. It, it is. And then I thought, I thought our team had chemistry in 20, the, the Patrick Beverly year, yeah. 2022. I, I thought that team was like, man, this is, this is team chemistry right here. This is another level, completely this is different another level. level. And it's, it's a level of like, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like these guys just, just want the best for, for everyone. And that's why you just like for a 22 year old kid, like Ant who, on all the rest of his teams before coming to the Wolves, what he was the only guy. Um, just to have that that team first mentality is just crazy. Um, and and, and it, it's so it's so cool to see. Um, and and, and I'll, I'll bring this up. I mean, I think Mike Conley is a huge huge piece to that. Um, I saw this graphic the other day. Uh, before we made the Mike Conley trade. D'Angelo Russell was on was our starting point guard yep. before Mike Conley. No chemistry with that fucker. That was the worst statistical starting lineup ever. Yeah. And guess what? And he always we bitched make, about his teammates. We make one trade, put in Mike Conley, and they're one of the best lineups in basketball. Is D'Lo one of the worst players in the league? Absolutely. Hands down. Like, hands down. Yep. If, from start to finish. Yep. Because everyone else is the same in that right. starting lineup. There's what? one different piece. Worst to best? Are you kidding me? I, I like – what I like about Mike Conley, did you see what he said after the game? He was like, I don't even think these young guys know exactly what we did tonight. And I, I think you have to have a veteran like that he was the guy before the, the playoffs started that said, this, this might be my last shot, okay? Um, and so for him to also break it down, because like it, it looked like all fun and games after the game last night, like those press conferences, it, it was like the Tom Brady roast almost. Like those guys were having – but I think you need a Mike Conley to go, look, man, I don't think that you really appreciate or understand exactly what we did and that we still got work to do. And, and, and that's, that's why I love him. And he said today, he said he's still beat up, but he can still function. Um, you know, and, and, and I, I gotta believe that we will go as far as, but I mean, who knows? Jade McDaniels probably won game six and game seven for us. Don't you think? So I was going to bring him up. He is my MVP of this. Ant put it like this yep. for Phoenix and Denver MVP of the series. I know it. I know and, it. And Ant, and Ant got confused for a second because he forgot where they were. He said, "Isn't he like the the Western Conference Player of the Year or the the playoff MVP or whatever?" But he's like, "Oh no, wait, we got one more series left." But Jay, he was saying Jaden basically deserves that so far. Um, and I'm looking at this right now. I mean, dropping 23, six Two games in a row. Right, hitting seventy-five percent of his threes, 
uh, and playing lockdown defense. And I had what two fouls? Yeah, two fouls. Like, I- yeah, and that's going to bring me to to my next point. Um, so I've I've got I here here's an interesting one I've got for you, Noah. Um, because I was I was listening to um, Dan Barrero's show on the way home um, tonight, and uh, he brought up a, a point, or, or he offered this, and I was just like ludicrous. Um, but the more I thought about it, but okay, I'll get in. So he's proposing that they played the Minnesota Miracle, uh, you know, the Vikings, Minnesota Miracle against the Saints. Uh, they he played that soundbite, uh, a PA call in that, that game. And then he said he believes that what the Wolves did last night goes past the Minnesota miracle as far as what, what, what they, and, and I was like, that's absolutely stupid what you're saying. Like um, as far as miracles go or whatever, and then the more I thought about it and the more he said it, he was like, they did that over the course of the second half. They did something that no other NBA team has ever done. Come back uh, from 15 down at halftime uh, in a game seven on somebody else's floor. Um, and, and okay, so he said as the gradual second half went, that is more of a miracle then the Justin, Je- or uh, I'm sorry, the Stephon Diggs, um, Minnesota or Minneapolis miracle. And, and I didn't, but the more I listened to it, I was like, you know, he might have a point. Now the Minneapolis miracle was one play and it completely stunned me and it stunned the world. Like, like you're just like, but it was one play. Whereas the wolves had to work at it gradually over the whole course of the second half but every text I sent out after the game was, I'm absolutely stunned. I have no words for it. And so my my thought, like, w- would you even consider this a bigger, complete freak miracle than the than the Minneapolis miracle with the Vikings? Uh, my reactions were different. I would say at the end of the game, only because of what kind of franchise the Vikings were. You, like the, the, uh, the heartbreak that, that these teams have yep. gone through um, because yes, the wolves have lost, but you know, it's not like they've lost four Super Bowl or lost four NBA finals um, or, you, you know, it's not like you got plenty of teams just heaving half court shots and, and beating you in, in yep. fashions like that. Whereas the Vikings, like all of a sudden, you know, you're up whatever, and or they they kick a, a miracle field goal. They they do all this stuff like it never happens, and that's why the Minneapolis miracle was so special. Because, right. I mean, I remember texting my mom. She was at a different house or whatever, and it's just always always happens to us. Always happens to us. Like we're gonna <laughs> lose this game, and all of a sudden it happened, and I I was jumping up in the air. I was, yep. I mean, it was. Whereas this one's like, yes, it was it was a gradual miracle i guess instead of like an instant and it was a miracle right like it, a, yes in and some and regards right and it's it it was just different i i think did it did the i think the minneapolis miracle hit differently than this one but i think this one has more gravity over over the minneapolis miracle in, what, in, in denver in denver they're calling it the mile high Meltdown. Yeah, I think that's no. I think that's what I well, heard. A mile high meltdown is what uh, Michael Malone had in his press conference. I don't know if you saw that one. So. No, I, he used that phrase. No, but he basically was being a. Every media member said he went. He was too much. So a reporter had asked him, you know, how do you basically just say, "Hey, you blew a twenty point lead." How are you guys feeling? And he just, well, season's over. Season's over. This <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. Season's over. Stupid ass question. And, and everyone's like, what was, the- it, was that when you could hear the wolves yes. hearing in the background because the locker room was right where the press room was? And it was like it was like the movie The Longest Yard where like all the guardsmen are all sad or whatever. And like, you hear what's going on in that <laughs> locker room right now, man? Like, why would you put the visiting team's locker room right next to where you're giving a press? <laughs> I love, love it. it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go because I have two more apologies to make. Um, but so I was hearing all this, you know, that, yeah, I took some flack uh, 
at, at school today, except for the fact that it was such a, like, like work was completely different today than any other day that I've gone to my job, man. And, and I walked in and I mean, I'm getting hugs from students who think I'm the biggest motherfucker around. All right. Like Mr. Voss, Mr. Voss, we got, we got this. All right. Uh, I saw one guy that I talk a lot of basketball with and I was coming around the corner and he looked and I, he said I was like bouncing as I was walking. He like, and he just started giggling. He's like, yep, I knew it. If they lost, you would have just, went, mm, you know, but all right. And so, yep. I talk pretty big again. Uh, but I was out at recess and the kitchen window was, was open. The screen was open and I heard it. And I heard Mr. Voss talking about, you know, like we got this, but who's going to guard Kyrie? That's what they, we want to know. Immediately. I lost my shit. I forgot I was at my job and I left my kids on the playground and ran into the kitchen. Who wants to talk to Mr. Voss? I'll tell you. And I started going off for it. So I, I go into the gym and I start going off on, on Mr. Clip because um, apparently he was like, no, they got Luca, they got Kyrie. And I'm like, Hey man, the Nuggets had Jokic and they had Murray, dude. They had two guys. We had a whole team. Who do you want? I said, who does Dallas got? They've got, they got Luca bitch and they've got Kyrie. Who do we have? We have a whole team. Okay. If you were the Nuggets, who would you rather? Okay. You had Murray and Jokic who had 34 and 35 respectively. No one else was in double figures. We had seven of our eight guys were in double figures yesterday. No one that scored 30, 40, whatever. Even Keel all the way. I said, no doubt in my mind that we have a better team than the Dallas Mavericks. And Cliff looked at me and he goes, you did say they were going to lose the last two games, Mr. Boss. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry, Mr. Cliff. You're right. But I've got proof on the podcast. I have proof with all my coworkers. I said, if we get by Denver, if we get by Denver, we have a legitimate shot at not only getting the NBA finals, but winning the NBA finals. Right? A hundred percent. And and look, like, I'll tell you this about this last series, OKC and, uh, and Dallas. Luca and PJ Washington won them the series. And I'm yep. not going to downgrade Kyrie. I'm absolutely not because Kyrie is still fantastic. But I'll tell you what, our perimeter defenders are better than OKCs. They absolutely are. Um, throwing Ant and, and Jaden on a Kyrie and a, and a Luca is different right. than what OKC can was, do. And guess so what? I, PJ Washington, if he has the series that he did, that, that he did last series, I mean, fine. But also, look, like a rookie Chet is different than a, a Rudy Gobert playing it down in the post. Yeah. So I, I just the, – the, I understand it's Luka and it's Kyrie. Yes, it's different than Jamal and and, and Jokic. But we're 1-15 through 15 on this team. Like this this team is – is Dallas is 1-2. and two. They, They're 1-2. Right. right. And and I think what we are – we no, we were 3-1 and one against the, the Mavs this year. The only game we lost was when they had Kyrie and and Luka Bitch. We uh, lost by like four. Eight, I think it was seven. seven. I think it was seven, seven or eight. But that was probably, and okay, they didn't have P.J. Washington either. Fine, I don't care. Um, then I got the questions today. Well, who's going to guard Luka? I was like, McDaniels, for sure. And, it, and when he does it, we'll throw another motherfucker at him. Who's going to guard Kyrie? I said, Edwards, for sure, right? Uh so my deal is, why can't we double Luca, just like they the Nuggets tried to double Edwards and they did to some critical acclaim? Why can't we do that with with, with Luca in in this upcoming series? I mean, it's at the 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 risk of leaving Kyrie a little open, but because it's not Kyrie's not a guy you're like, well, I'm gonna make Kyrie beat me, you know? Like it wasn't like a Hey, Michael Porter is gonna. We're gonna make Michael right. Porter beat us. Was he ever yeah. around? No. But, but that's that's my point. Is Dallas doesn't even have close. Now they are in the Western Conference Finals, but they don't have. I mean, you knew Aaron Gordon. Are you kidding me? Going eleven for twelve and, and like two games in a row, he couldn't miss. And that guy did he score more points in two games than he did all season? Like it feels like it. Right. You knew that that was somehow gonna. And at, at one time, and that's that's what I'm saying is why 
with the defense that this team has, why we – fine. Luka is the same as Jokic. He's going to get his. Just keep it fucking sane. You know what I mean? And 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 then we, we have a very good very good shot. You do. And, and I think, again, the difference is – if, if Jaden's having a tough hour, even when Jaden sits, then you throw Nikhil on him. And and, and it's just, right. it's, yep. we've got yep. so many defenders on this team. Conley's going to defend too. Edwards is going to defend. I mean, you got Jaden, you got, and then you got, look, it's going to be tough for them too, because you got PJ Washington. That's fine. I, he can shoot a little bit, but Daniel Gafford's going to be on the inside, but it's going to be a perimeter game because guess what? I mean, that paint is going to be clocked. Like that, right. you got two big guys in the in the paint that not, nothing's getting by him. So, I almost want them to drive inside. I don't, see what happens. Let, let's just see what happens. But it, it seems like it's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot of three pointers shot by 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 Dallas. So I'm curious how they how they defend that. Okay, and they, and and what about you know? So I did not, you know, I, I I don't like bitching about the officiating, but I did think there were a number of times at least last night, much less the series that the officiating uh, was a little questionable. Now we saw the Edwards foul where it was right on his wrist. And then the very next play, they call moving screen. They call moving screen twice um, on, on, on the wolves. And then like the very next play you would see Denver doing anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, I think that's going to be the key in this upcoming series. If you stay out of foul trouble, but you're still able to play your defense uh, and they're not calling ticky tack fouls or they're not calling it as close as they might in the regular season. I mean, I think the advantage has got to, got to go to the wolves, right? Right. And and I think our, without how, how our defense is, and you saw, I mean, Jamal Murray was, was never touted as this guy who would lose his cool. And boy, right. did we make him lose his yeah. cool. And guess who loses his cool a lot? Luka Doncic, right. especially with the referees. So if yep. you can get under his skin a little bit too, um, yep. if, if, if we can keep our composure, play our defense, let him get frustrated and take him out of the game, I mean, it, it to me, it's a done deal. I If Kyrie beats you once, I mean, that's fine. But right. but if you can neutralize Luka, I, I think that's a done deal. Now, I, lo- I love it because, uh, like I said, uh, so, so my phone rang before and after – I, I don't answer my phone on game days. I just don't. And my, my good friend, Chris, he left a voicemail and he was like, maybe you're not even answering your phone. And, and I respect that. So I'll just leave this long ass message. And, and, and I don't after. And it, in fact, like I say, I was getting texts from people and calls that I haven't talked to in months. And, and finally, I think it was only one person. I said, I said, there's only one person that has Johnny Voss uh, privileges after a, a Wolves playoff game. And that's Noah Storzinger. Okay. And I'm like, don't feel bad. It doesn't mean I got a lot of friends. I said, I got 50 calls last night and you're the only one that I answered. Okay. Now that being said, um, today go, going into my, my work day, it, it just was different. I mean, I shared some things about guys giving me a hard time and laughing and this and that, but, Man, even when I got in the classroom, as soon as one of my students walked in, uh, he came up and he was like, immediately, I'm like, no, we got a hug, man. And we we embraced, we hugged, and like, this is great, man. And he started, he, st- he started talking and he was just like, and I'm not making this up. No, all of a sudden, he sits back in his desk, it was before school starts, he goes, Mr. Voss, man, this is a good day today. And I, I looked at, it, I waited, I didn't say anything. I just got a smile on my face. And I said, I know I'm going to have to use that in my podcast tonight. And I said, I, I want to give you credit because it was the most organic. Like it was, it, it wasn't fake or like he practiced this or anything. All he was thinking about everything we were talking about. And he just sat back and looked up to the ceiling. He's like, man, this is a good day today. Huh? And I said, so I said, I, I want to use this. I said, I'll call you D and he goes, no, man, call me Desmond. Use my government name. It don't matter. I want to get credit for that. And I'm like, yeah, I want to give you credit. It was such a different feeling because not only did I send out texts about being stunned, I was like, 
this is not a regular Minnesota team. And so my last apology is going to be, wait, how do I do that? Oh, yeah, right there. To the Minnesota Timberwolves, because I watched every game you guys played this year, every single one. And I know that you don't have a quit mentality. You 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 don't think that things are so ins- insurmountable that you can't you can't persevere. Um, I owe you a huge apology because I knew you were going to lose this series, and now it feels like well he doesn't know what he's talking about, but now he's all confident because winning changed everything. I should have known because they've been doing this all fucking year, all fucking year. Yeah, it, it, it's I don't know, like like. T- t- it's feelings of of happiness that that again we're as Minnesota sports fans we're not used to this we don't know what this feels like this is just a different feeling of 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 happiness right like I, I before the game I mean I was shaking I was literally drinking I was like shaking because I've never been in like we've just never seen our team in these situations before for, for, for very long or, or ever for a lot of fans, including myself. So um, to come out on the other side of it is, is just surreal. It, it's just a different feeling that I will never, ever forget. I, w- I was so happy that you, you said that when, when we did talk last night, because I pretty much shook during the whole game. And I, I, now I gotta, I gotta tell you, I got, three hours of sleep in the last 48 hours. Okay. That included the debacle with Nico Salvatore. But then last night after the game, I couldn't get to sleep and I was exhausted. All right. So I couldn't sleep. But during the game, I was literally shit. I would watch him by myself and I was shake. My leg was shaking. And I was like, what am I Luca bitch? Like I, I, and I thought, well, that's cool. If I'm 51 and you're 20 something and we have that same deal going, like, you knew that this was a big deal. All right. And and I really felt like kind of guilty. I was like, it's just a game. What are you doing? No, it wasn't. It wasn't just a game. No. And man, and the, the guys I had over, it, they could feel that how different it was. I was like, I, y'all won all your freaking Super Bowls. You don't, you don't, you don't know what this feeling is like yeah. of just like the amount of crushing defeats that we have watched year after year, after year, after year, after year. This is just as this is different, and and to be nervous about this game and, and shaking and it is because I think it's like you can go into games knowing like, hey, we don't have a shot, and then maybe I wouldn't have been shaking, but I was like, I think this is the year, yeah. and yeah. I think we can do it, and that's why I'm just so I'm so amped, and so it's just a different and that, different yeah. feeling, and that's why I apologize to to P and and to uh, to Phil because I after. You know, when the second half began, I was like, no, I should be with my boys watching this, watching this game. And now I I really regret that I I didn't um, I didn't watch it with 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 other Wolves fans. Now. um, Yeah, that that's uh, that that's interesting. Now, um, moving forward, then what do you see uh, with this Dallas series? Because. You know, I told you that I didn't think that home court advantage meant anything in the Denver series. I really don't, you know, but but uh, um, I, I think that if if we were to go up 2-0, I think Dallas has got some real, real, real trouble. Uh, I, I think it matters in this series a little more. Um, you know, I said Sun Series, I said Wolves in seven came back. I I said Wolves in seven for this one too, but I'm not, I don't think if this one goes to a game seven, um, I don't either. I, I truly well, think this is a Wolves in five and also selfishly, like not that I, I, yes, I want them to sweep, but I finally have the opportunity to go to game five here. So I, 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 I really want to see. You're going that, to game five. I think so. And so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, but okay. man, I, um, I, would, I would hope that there isn't a game five now. No, but, but I, I do think like, look, I, I think Dallas takes a game, especially on their home floor. I could, I could see that happening. So um, Wolves and five is, is my prediction. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to make a prediction because I'm always wrong. Um, now I, 
there's two things that I, I still want to cover. And I know we've gone, but we, we've been out for two weeks, so we can do that. It's our show. So um, first thing, I was so sure that the Wolves were going to lose this series. Um, and I guess, Michael, because we talked about this, number one defense all year. They should have been the number one seed uh, in the playoffs. They did something that they'd never done before is sweep a series and actually win a fucking playoff series. They go in 2-0, in, win two games in Denver, and then come back and lose two. Then lose to, to Denver in game five, come back, win game six. Game seven, if they lose this, Regardless of all the hype about the number one defense, they were the number they were first place most of the year. They did something that most Wolves teams don't do, won a playoff series. Uh if they had lost last night, and I was thinking because I, you know, before and prior podcasts, I said the Wolves need, you know, like all these teams, all you know, they're close, they're close, and then they boom, then they win. And I was like, no, 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 I think we're there right now but I'm not because I didn't say that. Before. Okay. If they would have lost last night, would this have been a winning season for you or would it have been a disappointment? It would have, it, it still would have been a winning series. I mean, you, you, you got past at least one round and, and, and truthfully, not that we were expecting anything less. Um, but for, for me, this was the best season of Timberwolves basketball I've ever seen in my entire life. Right. But if you don't even get to the Western conference finals, would you still, because, because then I got to look at like, okay, now we got to play 82 games again. And let's say we're, we're, we're number one all year by, let's say that we win the West by 20 games, but we still have to work our way through the playoffs and maybe we don't even make the final. I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? And so that's, that's my question would, would this been a, a flop or, or would you have taken this as like, no, 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 we should have achieved so much more. We're just happy that we got to the second round. You know what I mean? I I mean, happy we got to the second round, yes, but I mean, you're playing the defending champs. They have home court advantage and you took them to seven games. That's something to be excited about. Yeah, except for the but, fact that we had them, we took two in Denver – Yes. You win one of two games, the series is over, right? right. And, and so yeah. if you would have lost game seven because you totally did not show up in game three or four, I mean, to me, it would have been heartbreaking. And it would have been, fuck off, Michael Rand. It is cursed team. It, it would have been disappointing for sure. But at the end of the day, to me, I, I, I still would have been very happy with the season. Only a sense of like, first of all, I don't think one person – but well, there's there's one one person I'll shout him out, but um, I don't know that one person had the Minnesota Timberwolves making the Western Conference Finals this year. Nor do I think many people at all had the Wolves right. in the second round this year. So that's where I think. I mean, they 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 outdid predictions for sure. I wish I had bet the over on their over uh, the wins and losses. Um, so that's why I think it was it was great. Yeah, I mean, it would have sucked to be this good and and lose in that fashion, but. Um, no, I think it was it was positive, and I got to shout out uh, my brother in law Lewis uh, when he we had him on the podcast last time. He did say, now this was last season, um, but he said next year the Timberwolves are going to the Western Conference Finals, and he got it right. So I got to give him my got to wow. give him his flowers. Okay, all right. Um, last thing, because like I say, I've I've always got friends that try to keep Johnny grounded or whatever, but you might've noticed that the Wolves brought back a lot of former players, uh, you know, to, to hype the crowd up or whatever. And what I didn't understand, I think it was, well, that was game six, right? They brought Isaiah. Don't call me J.R. Ryder. And here I was like, what the fuck are you doing here? We're trying to exercise the demons of previous Timberwolves and you're going to put that motherfuckers face on the screen and go, Hey, the Timberwolves. 
That guy did nothing for this team. And you, all right, whatever. At least he was sitting next to Gugliotta. All right. Now, I think I brought this up in, in game one before there was any Isaiah, don't call me JR. I was like, you know, they got to bring the ticket back. They got to, and I know he will not step foot in the target center as long. And I find it interesting that last night they showed A-Rod on TV, but not Glenn Taylor, because I believe Glenn Taylor was in the arena, right? He was. I don't remember seeing him. Fuck him. The, him. the only time Glenn Taylor was shown, I don't think it was on TV, but it was a, it was a picture from what I saw was when Jamal Murray hit a big shot. He turned right to Glenn Taylor. Oh, he flexed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. You know. Okay, all right. So I was sitting around with my boys. I think it was game one. And I was like, you know, well, now what happens? I said, because I, I know the deal. If it went to game seven, Garnett could technically on his birthday, you know, maybe make a trip, you know, to Denver. But I said, now what if what if the Celtics and the Wolves? Because we know Garnett will never step foot in Target Center. I said, but what if he goes to Boston for an NBA series between the Wolves and Boston? And I said to P, I was like, and but what, whose jersey would he wear? And he like P looked at me. He goes, he's not gonna wear a fucking jersey, Johnny. All right, he's not. He's gonna. And I was like, I I know, but he could wear a you know a Timberwolves turtleneck or something, you know, like, no, he's not going to do any of that. And, you know, another point that was made was his fucking Jersey is hanging in the rafters in Boston and not in Minnesota. But I'm like, I know, but it feels even though like he won a championship in Boston, it feels like he has more love and devotion to the wolves. Right. And so I I wouldn't mind him showing up in Boston and whatever, if you want to support Boston, that's fine. Just to be there. But would that ever happen? So he Jimmy has a, Jam was there last night. He has a podcast and with Paul Pierce. And they talked about it. And Paul Pierce had asked him, So if it's Celtics Timberwolves, what what the hell are you gonna do? Like what do you I and he said Oh, I got I'll send you the video. Okay. But he said, Oh, I'm 50 50. I win either way. Yeah, right. And he's like, right. he's like, yeah. so if if the if the if the Timberwolves win game one, whatever, he'll go in the locker room. Yeah, we did that yep, shit. Yep. And then, you know, if the Celtics win, yeah, we did that shit. Yep. So he was like, I, you know, uh, do I think. Now, wait a minute. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's say in a perfect world that Garnett, his last year when he was, when he came back to Minnesota, let's say in a, in a crazy uh, mixed up world the Wolves would have won the NBA Finals. Do you think for a second that Gar- Garnett would have said, "This is for Boston"? No, right? Not a, not even close. No. All right. But what did he do when he won with Boston? It's for Soda, baby. So, I I think he's being diplomatic because you have to because you did, and your jersey hangs in Boston. But to me. If those two teams, if you're going to pick one and Glenn Taylor, you know, was out having coffee somewhere else, I think Garnett would take the Wolves over Boston. Don't you think? I I do. And to be honest, I, I think if it's K, if, it, if it's Celtics Wolves, I think if there's one guy that's going to show up at Target Center, I do think Kevin Garnett will show up to Target Center. No, he won't. No, he won't. I think he will. He's well, shown up once wrong. before. Huh? He was there in 2018, so he's been there, and it was for a but regular season shit game. Shit went down after that because that was when he was talked about maybe being a part of ownership as well. well so I just, I and just they, they continue the to burn are, bridges. Uh, I I would be, you know what? I've been wrong so much in the last two weeks. I'd love to be wrong again, but I'm I'm going to go on a limb and say we will not see ticket in the Target Center. You know who we saw game six, uh, who got quite the standing ovation. Um, yeah, game six. Can you guess which former Wolf player was was there who got a big ovation? Ricky Davis? No. Nope. <laughs> Very he was a little more recent. Shabazz Muhammad? 
Oh, that would have been – I've seen a couple jerseys. <laughs> no, um, Carl Anthony Towns running mate for, for years, Mr. Gorgie Jang. I did see that. Yes, I did see that. I always like Gorgie Jang, man. Yeah. Um, all right, well, uh, maybe they will bring in uh, – because I know Pooh Richardson had been to a game. Maybe they will bring in uh, Bob Thornton or uh, Todd Murphy. I, I would like to see that. Um, but uh, when Sam Mitchell, where he where's he been? I I don't know. I don't know that he. I. What is he doing he's, now? He's got a history. He's got a history. Right. I, I don't think he's doing anything. I think he just got a, a knee replacement surgery, what or a hip replacement. I don't know knee. I think. Um, so maybe that's why he's been out, but I'd bring Sam Mitchell back, man. If they, if they could bring back one player from the last, let's say six years, more recent guys, six years, who, who would you bring back? Cause I got my pick. Wow. Uh, last six years. Do, do we ever have Jamal Crawford? <laughs> well, yeah, and he announced the game. But I'm kidding. And my question is, is Reggie Miller, was he banned from doing Indiana, New York games? I think like, so. Right? It, it had a been, right? That's why we had him for every game? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I, and which is fine. We got Kevin Harlan, so. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so um, I'm going to say this, man. Um, the last, last thing I want to bring up, because I think it's – it's it, it's so sad. So you saw NBC's got the rights to the NBA now, which means the best, hands down, the best NBA talk talk like pregame, midgame, postgame is what we've had on TNT for years, and we're not going to be able to see it anymore. And that that really makes me sad because I love listening to their hype before the game. Yeah, they joke around a lot. But I love listening to all those guys. I was disappointed Shaq wasn't there last night. All right? Yeah. Um, and end of an era, I hate the world we live in, but who the fuck is NBC going to get? Because ESPN is terrible. ESPN is absolutely the worst. I And I think it's going to be some of the same. It's just going to be people that it really doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, it, recently, I for whatever reason, and maybe it's just because he's been on our side for quite some time, but I don't mind listening to Kendrick Perkins. Yeah, ask Rudy if he likes listening to Kendrick Perkins. Yeah. Kendrick Perkins, really, what do you like about that guy? I, I Truthfully, it's probably because he's he's been uh, full wolves for like the last two years, but I don't know. I, I just think some, some of the – well, no, and he's he, – you know, if he's going to talk some shit, he'll talk some shit. But but I think the analysis are getting a little better. Personally. Okay. Here's the thing, which to your point, it doesn't happen. The Minnesota Timberwolves are everyone's darling right now. Everyone's darling. Every And, and so, like, you know, I apologize to Marty, which I, I did owe him that apology. Um, when I asked him about going to Denver for game seven, he was like, you know, I'm just on a flight right now uh, to, to Los Angeles uh, for a buddy's 50th birthday. And I got a text, I think the other day, and he's like, you know, for the record, everyone everyone in Los Angeles are, are, are pulling for the Lakers. Fuck out of here. I don't give a shit about anyone in Los Angeles. I don't care. That, what, that's going to make, oh, everyone in Los Angeles, whether you're a, a Lakers fan or you're from fucking Altoona, Pennsylvania, I, I care about what people in Los Angeles think. No, I don't. And that's the only thing, Marty, that I'm going to rip on you for. But, you know, we are everyone's darling right now. Everyone is pulling for us. And the only way that this could be better is if you had a Pacers, Timberwolves, NBA, uh, NBA Finals. It, it would be nice just because I think we would absolutely destroy the shit out of Indiana. Yeah. Um, but I'll and, say that no one – no one wants to see a Dallas Indiana Finals. That would no. be the and I don't think a lot. Of, I think as far as ratings, I I think no one would want to really see an Indiana Wolves series, except for the fact 
that, like I say, we're everyone's pet right now, and they want to see uh, Anthony Edwards for sure. Yep. Maybe are intrigued about Carl Anthony Towns. Um, you know, so I don't know. It, it, it's exciting time for all of us right now. Absolutely. And, and I said this to my students, to my coworkers, to everyone that called and text last night. You know what, Minnesota? Enjoy this right now. Enjoy. Enjoy what you're feeling right now because you don't know how long it's going to go. Um, so embrace it. Soak it all in because it always goes down smooth. Um, all right. Uh, we may get to baseball at, at some time during the course of uh, the podcast, but unless you got anything else, we're probably not going to see you guys till after game three, right? Probably. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what happens. Well, uh, for my, 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 my good friend, Noah Storzinger, I'm Johnny Boss. Show to be named later podcast. Go Wolves. We'll see you next time.